Good morning, everybody, and thanks for being here. Another beautiful day in Osceola, New York, where I, where I currently live and where I've been for the last uh, 15 years of my life. Um, we're here today for, uh, I hope, a very great and special occasion. I'll let you know that in a few minutes as I go on. But I want to thank everybody for being here today, and I mean from all over. This, there are people here, not just from Osceola, there are people here from Canandaigua, New York. There are people here from downstate New York. There are people here from upstate New York. And that's what New York State represents. Everybody, unified. This state can't be separated. This state can't be taken and seceded like a certain person already said he wanted to do. This state can't silence people like a certain person wanted to do. That's not what it's about. I'm here today to give a voice to everybody and be fair, not judgmental, but with love, harmony, and together as one to make New York State great. I came from Kingston, New York is where I grew up. I had a fantastic uh, childhood living there that's downstate New York for those who don't know. <laughs> My family came from Long Island and Yonkers. As we continued to grow in our families, with our lives, what we did, we spread out through New York State. I eventually, after uh, going to school in, in uh, Kingston, uh, furthering my education a little more at community college, participating in the United States Army, serving there, getting on the local police force in Kingston, New York, in Ulster, New Paul's I was, I moved on to Rochester, New York, out to Western New York and Rochester. I want to branch out in my life experiences to get a feel for what the state is all about. So I went from small town, small city, to a large city environment. Lots of diversity, as they say. Wonderful people. Great people to serve and great people to work with. I left Rochester and retired in 2006 when I had a very uh, beautiful blessing come into my life, my wife, and that was our daughter. So I became a father at 42 years old. I was hoping by then I had enough uh, experience and knowledge how to raise a child. But let me tell you out there, it doesn't prepare you until it happens. <laughs> my wife and I have been married for 26 years. Uh, so we left, um, like I said, from, from Rochester area and settled in Osceola, New York. I came to upstate New York because I saw from my childhood how beautiful the area was, how beautiful the people were, and how they treated everybody. While I was here, a short time later, after being retired in the city of Rochester Police Department, I uh, ran into a friend who was a deputy in the Lewis County Sheriff's Office. Uh, upon speaking uh, with him for a little while, they, they asked me if I'd like to take a job again as a law enforcement again in the area. And I thought, why not? I was 42 years old, I missed the excitement, I loved it, and I like serving the people. So I became a part-time deputy of Lewis County Sheriff's Office. I did that for approximately six years, and then the people of Lewis County, the men I worked with and women, came to me and asked if I would be interested in running for sheriff. Oh, I said, sheriff? I've never stepped into politics, as they say, into that arena. But when a challenge is presented to me, and I think it's for the right cause, I like to stand up for the people and take that challenge on. So I ran for sheriff in 2011. I was elected in 2011, took the office in 2012, and I'm currently today still the sheriff of Lewis County, New York, and proud to be the sheriff of that county for the people that I work for. This brings me to today. What we've seen all across the country, and especially here in the state of New York, upsets me greatly. I have worked in the capacity of my office as an elected representative to the people under a regime that has not been very representative of everyone. Hasn't been fair at all to the police community, or as I'll say, to all the first responders. For that reason, it's one of the main causes that has driven me today to where I'm headed. I do not like the divisiveness that I've seen. I do not like the negativity that I've seen. I didn't grow up in a beautiful state to hear that. I didn't put my roots down here in a wonderful state to see and hear that and be told that. I know better. 
We all know better. This is a beautiful state to live in. It's a wonderful place. All the way to the New York State Canadian border, all the way down to New York City, Long Island, Staten Island. All the way up to the Adirondack Mountains. We need to be together as one. We may have our different opposing opinions, we may have our different politics, but the only way the state survives is when everybody treats everybody in a fair manner, a respectful manner. And we all have a voice. It warms my heart greatly to have this opportunity today to stand before you. And also makes me a little nervous. Just like when I became sheriff. Uh, somebody said to me, and that would be my father, he said, uh, what are you going to do when you chase the bull around after a while? And also you grab a bite of horns, what's going to happen? Well, I learned what happens when you chase the bull and grab a bite of horns and you think you can. But I think I've done a pretty good job afterwards on how to calm that bull, how to work with it. So today, the reason why we're here because I want to take on responsibility. I want to take on your voices. I want to unify this state. I want to see the ridiculous rhetoric, the hateful rhetoric, all go away. I want to see that go away. I want to see us come together. I want to see us work to where we say, I love New York again. I love it. We also love it. So now, thank you for all being here. I would like to have and to see the elected office for New York State Governor. And that's why I'm here today and I'm you to announce that I'm going to run for New York State Governor. in a good way, in a good way. We have honor, we have integrity, God-fearing, hard-working, unifying people that want that office to be brought back to the respect that it's owed. I believe we can do it. I believe we can do it. Strong in my heart, I do. There's been a virus that's going around through the state and it's ravaged a lot of places. It's taken the lives of people that we all love. And I understand that. And my heart goes out to every family that, that that's happened with. But we need to open this state up. We need to go back to where people who are trying to work, trying to contribute, trying to make uh, us prosperous again, and the venue that I'm in right now is an example of that. Individual that has this venue was in the process of opening his business, was going to be ready to flourish, and it was shut down amongst this virus under an executive order. I understand being safe for the community. But we also have to be able to continue forward and prosper so we can make we continue in New York State to make it a, a, a beautiful place to be in again, to love. It really makes my heart very happy to come from where I have, to be raised by a family from downstate New York, to get the values, expand out throughout this state, be welcomed into other communities, and be one with them. To respect their areas, to respect their lives, the way that they do business, the way that they uh, live. That's why I feel 
that I will be your candidate for the office of governor to bring this all around together. I definitely am nervous, but I am definitely also confident and humble that we will achieve this. But again, it's going to take everybody together to do it. So, I just want to finish with saying thank you to everyone that is uh, giving me the opportunity to be here today. I thank you. Lord and God, forgive me the courage and the faith to do what I'm doing today. And I thank the people. And I also thank the country for having the United States Constitution to go by, to govern as well, and adhere to that. We're a free country, we're a free state. We should always remain that way for everyone. For everyone. With that, I just want to tell you all, I thank you very much for being here this morning. And let's take this, as they'll say, let's take this train, let's get it on the tracks, let's set us up this up straight, and let's uh let's set the New York back to being where we love it again to say that I want to hear we love New York again. It's a beautiful state. I want to go back to that. I want to love it. I want to see it grow. I want to see it prosper. I want to see us all as a people work together. And we're going to do this. Thank you. Any questions real quick? <laughs> Sheriff, will you be seeking... <laughs> Where can we get yard signs that day? Uh, in a little while, um, like you say, um, we were just putting the committees together for, for the election committee to do things. Remember, this, this race is a little under two years out. And the reason why I came out early uh, is because I think that right now in the state of New York, the people needed something positive. Um, we needed to hear some good things about the state of New York. We needed to have some hope. And that's why I, I'm, I'm reaching out early to tell everybody, you have a candidate for that. Um, and plus it gives me plenty of time and us plenty of time to get the word out across this state Sheriff will you be seeking the Republican nomination for governor or is it an independent run Can uh, I, I will be seeking seeking the, the Republican Republican spot for it I, uh, I, um, when I ran for sheriff uh, I was I, I, the first time around I had, I'm, a, I'm originally conservative originally I'm conservative Republican um, I was very fortunate enough the first time I ran, I was endorsed by the Democrats, the Conservatives, and the Republicans. Of course, after four years of being in office, you know that one. <laughs> but yes, I will be uh, seeking the Republican nomination. Yes, I will. Endorsement. Yes. Yes, sir. If everything works out for you in the next couple of years, for the next election, would, what would your first order of business be when you got to Albany? Oh, my first order would be to bring everybody in. I want to find out from the people, from our assemblymen, our legislators, our senators, how are we going to take New York State from the direction that it's been going, turn it around, and start making it go straight again? I would say to them, I want you to go out and listen to the people. I don't want to hear it just from you. I want to hear from all the people in New York State. Give them that voice they need in a fair way. Give them that voice. Come back to me. Let's hear what they want out there. That's why I plan to do the next two years is to listen to you, how you want to see New York State be. How will your run for governor impact your role as Lewis County Sheriff? Will you still continue on as being sheriff? I will still continue on as being sheriff. I have some fantastic uh, uh, staff back at the sheriff's office that will keep that office running, um, that will stand for the people in Lewis County, and, uh, and continue to keep them safe there. Yes, no, it won't impact it at all. My, I'm still going to be at the office. I'm, I'm hoping to, you know, whenever I can get away, get out there and do the campaign that I need to do. But I have great people back there that are, that are taking care of that office. Anybody else? Feel free to ask me while I'm up here. Matt. 
Yeah, I may look nervous, but I'm not afraid to take a question. What's your biggest motivation and inspiration for putting together a run like this? I know you touched on it a little bit yeah. in your opening comments, but. Well, I, you know, I don't, I, like I said, I don't like seeing the pain that our state's in. I don't like seeing, um, you know, the, 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 the waste of, of, of our resources and money to, uh, to, to end up where we are today. Uh, I don't like seeing the representation that, uh, that we haven't had in the last uh, you know, eight years. Um, that office is not about the man in it. It's about the people who allow you to be in that office. And that's what needs to come back to what the people want. Everybody. Not just one small group, not one large group. Listen, you're not gonna please everyone. I'm not gonna stand up here and try to tell you that. We're not. But it's the elected person's responsibility to do it in the utmost fair manner, in the utmost common sense manner. We don't have that today. We don't have that today. We're being driven by, I mean, you name it. I'm not even going. We're, 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 you name it. I, I don't have to tell you. You see where we are. And we're not going to stay here. We're going to get better. Anybody else? Okay, well, yes, sir. Sure. What more fundraising you got commence? In a, in, a, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a, the website will be up. A couple of weeks, it'll tell you uh, where we can make uh, donations up and coming, um, where we can get signs. Now remember, I can't put any signs out uh, until it'll be uh, February of 2020. I'm thinking, or a little bit after that. 2022. Think this, sorry, thank you. 2022. So, uh, well, I just have the website up there, and you'll be able to uh, find out where to get those from and how we can go about doing it. So I do have to gather 15,000 signatures up and coming, 15,000 signatures. But I know that uh, in, in, in uh, upstate New York, we can probably get uh, more than half of that. And then we're gonna go to downstate New York. I wanna I, I want get back down there. I wanna I want talk to people. I wanna see them, I wanna be questioned. You know, I, I wanna be amongst everybody down there. We'll get those down there too as well. You have a clipboard with the Swagger sign? <laughs> Pretty soon, sir. Pretty soon. Another, another, another year, year and three quarters. We'll be out there doing it. Thank you. So, like I said, I, I thank everybody for coming here today. Uh, look, it's going to be, it's going to be a great, a great, a great time. It's going to be a positive time. Yeah, there are going to be things thrown at us, thrown at me. Uh, sure, there are. You know, I know that. Let them, let them. You know, I've been a police officer for over 32 years, 33 years, or even longer than that. <laughs> I have lived my career with integrity and honesty. I've been lucky enough to be given the leadership office of, as a sheriff. I've been blessed with the men and women in that office who trust me. That's what elected officials should have. That's what you should have from your elected official. That's what I want to bring back to you. Anybody else? All right, well, like I said, thank you so much for being here today. Let's get this started. I know it's a little under two years out, but we're going to build momentum now. We're going to show them that we're coming back. We're going to give something for the future to our young people, our children, because right now, it doesn't, it, to them, it doesn't look that good. It shouldn't be that way. They need to have, they need to have something to look forward to. They need to have a way to make a living. They need a way to be able to stay here and keep and build upon everything that we have afforded them, that's been afforded to us from our grandparents to our great-grandparents all through the time in New York State. We need to keep it. We want to build upon it. That's what we need to do. I want it so the future looks bright for them. Thank you.